Leonardo AI is one of the top AI text to image generators out there. And all you have to do is give it a text prompt and it will create an image in any style that you want. But what makes it unique is that it has a fine tuned set of AI models. And if you're looking for a very specific style like photorealistic or 3D animation, you could just choose your models before you give it your text prompt. Leonardo also has an entire editing platform for editing images called AI Canvas. So here you can make any edits to any image you create here inside of Leonardo or the ones you could upload to Leonardo too. So to get started with Leonardo, go to leonardo.ai and then you could create yourself an account here. And they have daily free credits too. So you could get started completely for free. And once in a while, they do hit a limitation. So they may have to send you an invite code. So if you can't get in right now, you'll have to wait till you get an invite code. But this is what the platform looks like. This is Leonardo. They do have mobile apps as well. And Leonardo is powered by Stable Diffusion. If you haven't heard of Stable Diffusion, that's the technology that enables text to turn into images. So if you look up here, these are the different models. So this is what's really interesting about Leonardo. The Diffusion Excel model, again, this is powered by the latest version of Stable Diffusion. But you could see they have fine-tuned models for very specific things. So if you want the photorealistic option or the 3D animation that I showed you, it's over here. But they have a lot of different options available here for models. In fact, they have a tab right here. It says fine-tuned models. If you go to this tab, you can see all these different types of fine-tuned model. So if you're trying to create pixel art, for example, you just click over here and then you could use this model here and everything it creates will be in that style. And if you go to the home tab here, you could always look at what other people are creating over here. And then you could click on one of them and you could see their exact prompt. And it lets you copy that prompt from here to then generate your own version of what this looks like. So this is extremely useful. You basically have infinite prompts here inside of Leonardo that you could copy. I'll talk about these other options as well. And then you could see what model, what fine tuned model they used. So these fine tuned models are trained with a very specific style to make it a lot easier to create something that you're looking for. Okay, let's go ahead and create our first image here using text in Leonardo. So to do that, you need to pick a model. This first one typically, if you choose it, is the latest diffusion model. So this is again, the latest version of stable diffusion. And this is the more general category model. So it's not very fine tuned to those specific styles that We'll look at it in a second. I'm gonna press generate with this model. And that brings us inside of Leonardo where we could actually create. So right up here, this is where your prompt is going to go. And then I'll walk you through some of these other options that make it a lot more advanced as we go. So right here, let me go ahead and paste a prompt that I have. And this is something again, I copied from the homepage by another user here. And over here, if I press generate, it's gonna say it's gonna use 11 tokens. So this is token based. And over here, the 150, this is how many tokens I currently have. And it says resets in two hours. It may take up to an hour to update your tokens. You could always press upgrade here if you want more tokens and pay for any of these additional plans. But right now, with the free plan right now, I get 150 fast generation and then you could upgrade to the paid plans. The next thing you have is the fine tune model. So I picked that default one, but there are different versions that get you different results. If you're new, I just recommend you always pick the first one to see what kind of results you get because every time you generate, it's gonna use up more of your tokens here. Right here under this dropdown, you could choose a different style. Again, leave this to none for now. You have this new thing called elements here, which we'll touch upon in a second. And then you also have negative prompts. So you could turn this on and tell it things you don't want to see. This is great. Most platforms that do this kind of stuff don't have this much control. So this is a more advanced platform than Dolly, for example, that takes place inside of ChatGPT. As you can see, I have a lot more control here. And I think that's what's made this really popular, this Leonardo platform. Right now, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and generate here, and then I'll show you what happens next. And here, I got four different generations over here that I could go ahead and make any adjustments to. I could go ahead and download the image from here. And there's a bunch of other options here that I'll touch upon in a second. But the next thing I wanted to show you here is this tab right here called prompt generation. So this allows you to come up with complex prompt ideas with a simple prompt. So it has its own prompt engine built into it. So you don't have to come up with a complex prompt like this one. So right now, let's go ahead and try a prompt like racing cars. Something super simple. I'm gonna press ideate over here. 
and it's going to generate a bunch of different ideas for different prompts. So then from here, I could either copy these prompts directly from here or I could generate them directly from here. And then you could also change the number of prompts to generate. So I just generated four, you could generate eight. Now, again, let me go ahead and generate this one. This is a car now. And it's generated these four cars for us. So let me go ahead and click on one to show you a little further what you could do here. You could delete it, you could download it, you could go ahead and copy this. And then you could also remove the background here with one click. So this costs a couple of tokens here if you want to isolate this car, for example. So this is something you typically do in a photo editing app like Photoshop. And then on this drop down, once you do remove the background, you have the original and then you have the one with no background. So that is very, very useful. You could just download this version of it here to your computer directly. Now there's a premium option, Alchemy Refiner here that requires a paid version that's going to let you do a lot more in your refinement of images you create here. So if you do want to do that, I recommend going and upgrading your account here to take advantage of the refiner. Now let me go to the prompt generation. Let me create a new prompt over here and I'm going to show you some of these options on the left side that we didn't go through yet. So here I generated four different images based on this prompt up here for a Mars landing. And if I go to the left side, I'm going to go ahead and refine this a bit. So next time I'm going to create only two images. By default, you could create eight. Then you have this option photorealistic. So this requires again, a paid upgrade or a free trial here to a paid upgrade. And to improve your images, this Alchemy, this version two right now, if you turn this on, it just gives you better results every time this is part of a paid upgrade. Your output resolution shows up over here as well as long as this is turned on. If this is turned off, that's going to lower the resolution that you're going to get. In fact, right here, 1024 by 768 is the typical resolution. They do have an upscale option too that I'll show you here. Do you want the image to be public? As long as you're using the free option, it will show up on that homepage or in the public setting here that other people could see. The image dimension, you could see you could choose that from here, but you're not going to be able to get more than this here unless you turn on one of these options or upscale. We'll talk about that in a bit. Here you could have advanced controls like changing the aspect ratio. So this is useful if you want something that's 16 by nine. Now the guidance scale is an important setting typically in any of these diffusion text to image type models. So this is how simple this is. The higher you go, the more the text is going to match the output and the lower you go, the less. So right now seven is the default option. So for this one, I'm going to go a little bit higher. Maybe I'll go nine here. You can see I get a little warning here if I keep going and it says it's going to produce unwanted results. So you have a small window here from five to about nine and then you get a warning. So I'll go to nine and then you have tiling. If you're using some kind of texture or pattern, you could turn on this option as well. And there's some advanced settings here, but again, for a beginner's guide, that's really all you need to know to get going with the generation. Sometimes this will increase the tokens depending on how many you pick here. So if I pick four generations, that's going to use up more tokens right now. I have a set to two. So let me go ahead and generate these right now. And it looks like I actually went the wrong direction here. So if I turn the guiding scale down, it was at seven. Let's go to five and let's go ahead and generate again. And in this case, with this prompt, with guidance scale going down, it actually gave me better results than going up. So this really depends on your prompt. Typically, if you leave it at seven, you should get good results with that. But it did change the aspect ratio. I changed it to 16 by nine. So now I got a 16 by nine that I could use in a video that is this size. Now the two paid options did not get triggered. So photo real and the alchemy option did not get triggered because I don't have the paid option right now. I'm using the free one that gets me free credits each day. Now let's click the logo. Let's go back over here. So let me show you what happens when you use a different model. So this time let's use the 3D animation style. And you could see this model again uses stable diffusion 1.5. And this is the resolution that is was trained on. Let me go ahead and generate. And I could use the exact same prompt, but now I'm in a different style. So I'm in their 3D animation. And this time, if you choose elements, basically these elements are an additional style that you could add to your image. Now that could again get you on one of the results when you're layering too many different things here on top of your prompt, but you could kind of see what these will look like right now. I'm not going to turn any of these on, but do experiment with that. And then negative prompts again, remember if you turn this on, you could choose different words here that you don't want inside of your generation. I'm going to keep this to two images. This Actually, let's do three images this time. 
Everything else I'm gonna leave on the default setting. Let me change the guidance scale to seven. That was by default. And let's go ahead and generate. And these using the 3D animation style looks a lot more like a cartoon. Now you could embed that in your prompt too. You could say 3D animation if you want, but this makes it really easy with these models to get that kind of result. And right over here, you have a few options. So you could upscale here, which I've already done. I'll show you that in a second. Then you have this smooth upscaler, which usually gives you better results if you click this right here. Again, all these do use up tokens and you have a different upscaler. So you could upscale in multiple different ways and all of them do get saved. So here's the original image, here is the smooth upscale. So it kind of makes a big difference here in the detail, especially if you turn this into a video, for example, with another app called Runway or things like that, you want the highest possible resolution. And you can see it's really changed the details. This actually looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this here to my computer, there we go. Now, another option you have is if you like other people's creation, you could click on it. You could go ahead and copy that prompt. You could do image to image or you could remix it. Now, remix it does again require a paid upgrade right now. Image to image, if I click that, it's gonna bring me over here where I could make any alterations here to both the prompt and the negative prompt, or I could turn off the negative prompt entirely. I could change the fine tune model. It's using Leonardo Vision XL right now. And then I could go ahead and change the strength, basically how much I want it to resemble the existing. And then I could go ahead and generate from here. So let me go ahead and generate. And if I go to generation history, so these are the ones I've generated here. I did it a couple of times. I pressed it twice, it looks like. And again, if I wanna make any adjustments, I could go ahead and click it and then go ahead and download it, copy it or remove the background. And I'll also show you this option right here. So where it says tools, remember the image generation brought us to where we could create or we could come to it from any individual model. But we also have this option called AI Canvas that I mentioned in the beginning. And here, if I go to the left side, I could import an image from my computer or anything I've created previously. So let me go ahead and bring something I've created previously. How about this right here? And this gives you a lot of options. One of my favorites is the ability to add text. So you could click add text. You have all these font options to choose. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But just the ability to add text to an image generation platform makes it really easy to create useful graphics, posters, anything for social media, all in one place. And then at any time you could press download artwork and it's gonna download it with any alterations that you made to it here. This box right here, I could also move this box and I could fill in what is not there. So if I grab a little bit of what's existing here, I could do what's called outpainting. That's when the image is gonna get analyzed and create something that doesn't exist here on this side. So in order to do that, these are all your different settings. This is called outpainting. And then there's inpainting too, where you could just add things to an existing image with inpainting. And if I come down here and if I wanna do outpainting, I could give it a prompt. So this is more of a city skyline here. I could go ahead and generate and it's gonna to go to work to fill in the rest of this image on the right side. And it's gonna give you four different images to see which one kind of blends in with the rest. So this one looks pretty good actually right here. I'm gonna accept that. And then you'll bring this box down here and do the same thing over here to generate the rest of the image down here. And I got four options. This one looks pretty good actually. Let me just select that, press accept. And there we go. So you could just keep going with this to keep making this as large as you want from your initial creation. The inpainting option also allows you to basically take the square and then place it somewhere within your image and create something using the prompt box down here. And again, you have a bunch of options. So if you wanna reduce how much token is getting used, make sure each time to generate just two images but this AI canvas is extremely powerful. And we're making an entire course on this because as you could see, this is extremely in depth. This is beyond anything else that we've used like Mid Journey and Dolly. And we have an entire AI learning platform called Skill Leap AI. So right now we have an entire Mid Journey course with over 30 dedicated tutorials, a hundred page prompt book here. So you could enroll in this right now. We have a Pictory course for video creation. We have a stable diffusion course. And everything is under one bundle. So everything you see, all these courses are just a simple subscription that you could just get. And then every time we roll a new course, which we roll out three or four per month, you get access to it. And the Leonardo course will also be added here. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.